Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Thanks for joining me for today's video. Today I'm going to be walking you through the creation of two cards that look very similar. And they look so similar because I created one, wasn't 100% happy with it, and thought, you know what, I could make this better. I'm going to redo it using the things that I've learned from the first card and then see where that takes me. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. I hope you guys are in it for the long haul. I'm using products today for Mom Elephant. They were kind enough to send along some of their March release to me. Uh, they sent me two stamp sets with their coordinating dies plus a cover plate. So there's the Raindrops cover plus the Rainy Days stamp set, which is the one I'm using today. I just thought these images were so adorable and cute. I could not help myself. And the other stamp set they sent along is called Flower Friends. And I actually had planned to create two cards today and have one be with this stamp set, which you'll see as we go along that I got sidetracked trying to color rain. <laughs> but I had such fun ideas for this Flower Friends stamp set that I might have to use it soon. But you know what? I had already ordered it from Simon when Mom Elephant sent me that package. So I have an extra of this stamp set. So if you would like to win this stamp set with these dies, please go to the form down in the video description or at my blog. Just click over to that form, fill out your name and email address, and then uh, you could possibly win that stamp set. So big thank you to Mom Ella for sending these products along. I'm going to start out by stamping a couple of the images from the stamp set. I love this little kitty image wearing a raincoat. And then there are quite a few different umbrellas that you can choose from. I thought, oh, maybe I'll do the umbrella that looks like a cat, but I thought, oh, that's a little too spot on. If I was a cat in a raincoat, I probably wouldn't have a cat umbrella. I'd have some other animal. So I decided to use the little teddy bear umbrella. I thought that was super cute. So I stamped it, you know, two or three times in intense black ink from Honeybee. And then I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this cardstock and stamp it again. And this would be a great opportunity to do a shadow study. I love doing shadow studies um, because it just reminds me to not be afraid of using really dark shadows and colors. So I'm going to cut these apart so that I can look at them both right side up. And then I'm going to do a really quick shadow study. Now, there are amazing coloring artists and card makers um, on Instagram that use Copics and colored pencils and um, pastels and just all sorts of things. But the one thing I've noticed in all of the ones that I really, really love is that they are not afraid to go really, really dark and really, really light. They have lots of contrast. So I've talked about this in the past, but this was sort of a personal reminder to myself to not be afraid of going really, really dark at the darkest areas on the image. So I'm adding a lot of shadow on the underside of the umbrella, a lot of shadow right around the cat's face as well. And I'm going to reference that shadow study as I color the images today. I've sped up the video footage just so I can talk you through a little bit of this but uh, it's actually pretty fairly simple coloring. It's just a matter of putting in those shadows where I have them on my shadow study. So I'm using the darkest colors where I have the darkest pencil and I'm reserving the lightest areas for the lightest shade as well. Now I ended up coloring uh, the cat twice. This is the second time around. I just wasn't happy with the colors that I chose the first time around. So this is my second coloring of this cat. And I was using more of a bright lemon yellow color palette for this raincoat. Um, I just really wanted a really, really bright, cool toned yellow versus more of a golden yellow. So when I created my second version of this card, which you'll see in the second half of this video, I actually changed up the colors of the raincoat and I'll call that out when we get there. But I just wanted to let you know that um, don't be afraid to recolor things, stamp them multiple times so that you have some backups to use and, you know, just go for it. So for the cat, of course, I'm coloring it like my two cats, Sophie and Daphne. They are uh, silver tabby American short hairs. So they're mostly gray 
a little bit of white on their tummies and their faces, but uh, they're mostly gray. And then I'll add in some little stripes here as well. I'm using some neutral grays for all of that coloring. And then I'm going to bring in an R21 for some little blush on her cheeks. Here are the stripes to make it a tabby cat, a few on her arms as well. And then I'm going to move on to the umbrella. Now I struggled with this umbrella because I thought it would be really, really pretty to have a purple umbrella, but I was kind of trying to figure out how I could have it have a little bit of that shadow at the very bottom of the umbrella, that rim along the edge plus have the shadow on the interior backside of that umbrella, but have it be defined enough. So I kind of went back and forth with these colors, and then I brought in the darker shades on the underside, and I just couldn't quite figure out exactly how I wanted to do this. So I oscillated back and forth trying to figure it out. So I'm going to bring in more of that dark shade of that purple and kind of bring it down. I just thought it got kind of lost with all of the same shades together. So then I grabbed a dark blue shade that kind of runs a little bit more purple. And I thought, you know what, I'll put that right at that edge and maybe that will define it enough. And I still wasn't entirely happy with that, but I'm going to put it aside or put the purples aside and I'm going to finish coloring the cat's pants. I'm using some nice dem denim colors for the pants, just B93 and B97. And then I'm going to go back to the umbrella. And I thought, oh, I just really wish those colors were a little bit different. So remember how I said this was the second time I've colored the cat? I'm actually going to um, bring back my original coloring of the cat. And you're going to see that that yellow color is not good. That's why I started over. But I already had the umbrella stamped. So I decided to go ahead and just color this umbrella maybe try coloring a little bit differently and see if I liked this version better. So I kept to the, the lightest and medium shade on the top of the umbrella and only brought in the darkest shade on the underside and back of the umbrella. I thought maybe that would be enough to differentiate between these colors. So I colored this one in, kept adding just a little bit of shadow, trying to work with it. And eventually I decided to just go back to the original one because I liked that cool tone from that blue I brought in. I thought it looked really, really nice. So in order to make that a little darker, I brought in some N8 to kind of a neutral gray and that darkened that up enough that, that I started liking it again. As far as the handle on the umbrella goes, I just used some more of those neutral grays that I'd used on the cat an N3 and N6. And then I also brought in um, just a little bit of pink on the cheeks of the bear umbrella. And I just tested that out on the one I didn't like just to make sure that I really wanted to do that. And I did. So I trimmed these out. I fussy cut them. Now I did have the coordinating dies, but I decided that I wanted to um, have a more clean edge um, and not have that white margin around the images that could distract from the background. So I decided to take a, a black marker around those edges and paint the white edges of the images. And that kind of hides any areas that aren't cut out just, just right. Hides any of the white and it gives it a little bit of a more finished look. So now I'm going to move on and try to map out exactly how I want my card design. Now I had sketched this out very roughly before I started this process. So I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like, but it's always different once you get the images cut out and you're seeing the size of the card. So I decided to mark exactly where I wanted the horizon line and just to make sure that it's um, not going to go too high or too low. And then I also added a couple marks where I wanted most of that rain background to be. I wanted to keep the area where the greeting was going to be a little bit cleaner. Um, so that I could stamp the greeting black. And then I just put in some pencil marks where the cat and also the umbrella would be. This is going to give me an idea of where they're going to be on the finished card. I then brought in a piece of post-it tape and I just put that down horizontally right where I wanted the horizon line to be. And so that's going to mask off and protect the area right below the horizon. I'm also marking in the diagonal angle of that umbrella. 
And I want my rain to be falling in that same direction. So I'm using a bunch of different blue shades, uh, coloring in like a very sketchy kind of way. Um, and I'm trying to keep that diagonal that I drew down on my post-it tape below. And this idea of coloring rain exactly like this actually came from Sandy Alnock. I Googled, um, like coloring rain with Copics and an old video of hers popped up and I thought, Oh, that's a really fun way to color rain. So I looked at hers. I was inspired by Sandy. I also found a couple of other, um, kind of artists. And then I kind of fell upon this acrylic painting on a Google image search and I thought, you know what, that is the look I wanted. I wanted it to kind of fade out around the edges and have it darker in the center, right around the focal point or the subject of my card. In this case would be the cat with the umbrella. And so I just did a bunch of different blue shades and strokes, um, just trying to get that motion of the rain. And then I did very messy strokes right below the horizon as well. And I concentrated the darkest shades right below the cat. So this is sort of, um, to mimic the, the shadow or reflection of the cat in the puddles of water. So this is basically how I colored the background. And at this point I thought, Oh, it doesn't look too bad, but, um, I wasn't entirely happy with everything that was happening on the background. I thought it started to look really messy and it just wasn't entirely the, the mood or image that I wanted to portray. But I was still kind of learning at this point and trying to determine exactly how I wanted to color this rainy background. So this was something that Sandy did. She used a, a, a color of the splendor. I'm using my Olo one because my Copic one is completely dried out and I haven't had a chance to refill it. But my Olo one was very bright, like very juicy. So I went with that. But basically just marking out where I wanted some of those raindrops to be. And then I came in with my Jelly Roll. This is a Jelly Roll number 10 bold white gel pen. And I brought that in and just wanted to put in some of those streaks of rain. I thought that looked really, really neat on a lot of examples that I saw. And sometimes uh, when I was looking at examples online, the, the rain is coming down you know, completely straight up and down. And other times it was at a diagonal showing a little more movement. Uh, it really varied, but a lot of them did include kind of lighter areas to show kind of the light hitting the water as it falls from the sky. So there's the basic kind of mapping out where the cat and the umbrella will be. I just wanted to have those placed on my kind of background here so I could figure out where I wanted to have the raindrops. So one of the things that was really bothering me when I was uh, coloring and also adding in the raindrops was not all of those colorful blue streaks in the background and not all of the white raindrops were the exact diagonal angle that I wanted. They, they kind of varied and it looked more chaotic and there are lots of energy. And I think that that's good if you want to you know, color in a very dramatic rainy scene, but I wanted it to really play off of the greeting, which just talks about playing in puddles. So I didn't necessarily want to have a really, really dark, dramatic thunderstorm basically in the background. So, um, at this point I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to go ahead and finish this card, but I think I might want to try recoloring the background again. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing yet. And also something that I came across was having that dark background going all the way across and then stamping my greeting in black um, doesn't really let the greeting stand out as much as I hope it would. So in the back of my mind, I was thinking, okay, if I was going to do this again, I would probably just extend that dark area all the way across and then use a white embossing powder. Using some Silver Fox cardstock from Spellbinders. I've misted it with a little bit of water and then I'm running it through my die cutting machine with the Puff Dotty embossing folder. I thought it'd be fun just to have a little bit of texture around my scene. So I glued that down to a five by seven card base and then I actually trimmed down my colored piece quite a bit. And it's not perfectly, uh, 
the right dimension for a five by seven card. So after I adhered it to my card base using some foam adhesive, I actually cut off about half an inch. So this finished card size is actually six and a half inches by five. I came in and added more white gel pen. I specifically wanted to have some over the cat and the umbrella so that um, it they blend in more seamlessly with the background. Um, without the raindrops on the cat and umbrella, it looks like they're just placed on top, like they're not part of the scene. So bringing in some of those white raindrop streaks really you know, cues in the viewer that this is all one scene, even though the cat and, and the umbrella are glued on top. Now you could definitely, um, you know, stamp the cat and the umbrella and mask them off and color around them or whatever you'd like. But I thought it was just a little bit easier to experiment with the rain background without having to worry about the cat and the umbrella in the way. I did add a little bit more of a dark blue down here at the bottom. I just wanted to add that in there at the end. Use a little bit of a lighter blue to soften those edges. And then here we are. Here is the first card. Now, I think it looks really great. I'm not complaining. I think it looks great, but it just wasn't entirely what I wanted. I think this got to like 85%, but I knew I could get it to like 95 or 100. So here we are. We're going to recolor everything and create a second card. Now, I changed up the colors on the raincoat, like I mentioned earlier. So this raincoat is going to be a little bit more of a golden yellow, but not as mustard yellow as the very first one I colored that I discarded and didn't even finish. Um, this one's just going to have a little bit more of a hint of a golden yellow shade, and I think it worked out really, really well. In fact, I remembered back to something I learned in our Copic markers for card makers class at onlinecardclasses.com, which is especially for yellows, you can add shadow to these using a very light purple. So I actually brought in a very, very pale uh, BV shade, BV00, and that just gives a little bit more shadow to yellow without making it start to look, you know, super brown, which is sometimes can happen when you're adding in some more darker orange shades. So I colored that in and these colors on camera just don't pop. They don't look as great as they do in the photos. So I'll show you the two cards side by side at the end of the video and then you can judge which raincoat you liked best. For the cat's boots, pants, face, I used the exact same colors. But for the umbrella, I decided, you know what, maybe what I didn't like about that first umbrella was that it just wasn't bright enough on the top of the umbrella. So I actually used a kind of a pale bright pink and had it fade into a purple. And I think that's exactly what I was missing on the original umbrella. I just wanted it to look a little bit brighter. I didn't want it to uh, read as just a plain purple umbrella. I wanted it to be just a little bit more fun because the cat is playing in the puddles. It's not, you know, just trying to protect itself from a dark and stormy, cloudy day. Um, this cat is actually making the best of the situation and going out and playing in puddles. So I really liked the addition of that pink. Toned it back just a tiny bit with a little bit of V01. And then, you know, I added the blush onto the cheeks of the bear. And then here we are. We're going to move on. So I'm actually trying out this We Are Memory Keepers mag magnetic board. Uh, I saw Jennifer McGuire use it in our latest class, Stencil 2, over at Online Card Classes. And I thought, you know what? That's intriguing. I want to try using it. And it came in clutch during all this blending. It has this magnetic ruler at the bottom that's really flexible and um, it really held things down well. So I did the same thing I did before, except I wanted to do an under layer of ink blending. So I'm using the colors Caribbean, which is a darker blue, and also Audrey blue, which was that lighter blue from Simon Says Stamp. And I just blended those on um, with a piece of post-it tape down into the horizon line. And then I kind of mapped out exactly where I wanted everything to be before I go in and start coloring. So this is the, the general kind of design that I want for this card. And remember when I said I didn't like how I didn't have a consistent diagonal stroke on the rain pattern? 
or even the white raindrops? Well, this is my solution to it. I got the angle I wanted, put a piece of paper over the top with a ruler, and then I cut it down using a mini trimmer from Tim Holtz. And this is going to give me a consistent diagonal uh, kind of line that I can use for my entire rain scene. So um, I'm going to be moving it along the edge of this ruler and it will make that diagonal stay consistent. So I'm going to just reference that as I do all of my coloring. And I did, you know, not all of these rain strikes are exactly the same. They're not perfect, but just having a little bit of that reminder going across really did seem to help. Now I use the same exact colors of blue, but as you can see, because that dark background is already down onto my cardstock, that um, when I add in these lighter colors, it's almost like it, it eats away at the ink. I think it looks really, really cool. Gives it a really fun texture. And what I really was missing on that first card was a soft blended out edge on the outer perimeter of my scene. And by doing my ink blending before I put in all of this texture, I think it really gave me the look that I was hoping for. I wanted a very soft edge. I didn't want it to be harsh. And, you know, the only thing you think of is just dramatic and blustery. I didn't want it to look like that. I wanted it to look more like a little bit like a summer rainstorm. So after I had all the texture in with my Copic markers, I removed the post-it tape from my horizon line. And then I'm going to uh, move that, you know, put a new piece of post-it tape and I'm going to protect the upper area now while I add some ink blending using those same colors down below. I'm just making sure I don't bring in quite as much ink um, and have it fade off much faster than it did on the top half. Use a little bit of cardstock just to protect the area at the top as well. So I'm going to remove the post-it tape and then I'm left with this kind of scene with the horizon line. So I'm coming in with those same colors and this time I'm concentrating um, all of the texture and brush strokes. I'm having them go horizontal like I did before, but I only want that color to be right underneath where the cat is um, because I want it to serve as, you know, that reflection of the cat in the water. So I did add a few strokes off to the side, but the darkest area I kept around the cat. And I really liked this. I think it really cleaned up the scene and it, it didn't look quite as messy. It looked a little bit more purposeful, um, but also very free. It wasn't like constrained. Um, I think it just worked a little bit better this time. Adding in more of those darker shades, just trying to get everything planned out just right. So I'm going to put my greeting there, the cat, and then the umbrella. At this point, I decided I'd have the umbrella tipped straight up and down as well. So now I'm going to prep my background with an anti-static powder tool from Simon Says Stamp. I did let this background dry for an ample amount of time, like a half hour. So um, it totally had a time to, to dry as much as possible. And then I'm stamping my greeting in a white pigment ink from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to be doing white embossing powder over the top. So this really helps me get a nice uh, white embossed impression. Putting on some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and tapping off that excess. And then I did end up using a tiny brush to clean up a few little powder areas, but for the most part, it worked really, really well. So I'm getting close to finishing off this scene here. One of the last things I need to do is add in those white raindrops. So I'm using that same cut diagonal card sock. I'm now using the other half, but it's the same angle. And I'm bringing that in and using that as a guide as I draw in all of these kind of streaks of rain. I'm being mindful of where the raindrops are because at this point I haven't adhered the cat or the umbrella yet. I did want some of them to come from behind and I knew it would be easier to draw them on before adhering the cat and umbrella. So I did add these on uh, before that. And I just used the, the edge of that diagonal cut as a guide to help me get these raindrops a little bit more consistent at that diagonal angle. Brought some down, down in front, had it kind of intersect the horizon line and kind of spread out all of those raindrops going all the way across. I also brought some around and below the greeting 
And by putting the greeting on here first before adding those raindrops, I can then make sure that none of the raindrops interfere with the words. Okay, so now I'm adhering the cat. I'm going to have her um, with her foot is planted nice and strong down onto that water. And then I'm putting a little bit of foam adhesive on the top of the umbrella and a little bit of glue on the handle. This is how I adhered it before actually as well. And I'll put that right below, or I should say right above the cat and adhere that down and press it down with my fingers so the glue can dry. So like I did on that first card, it's now time to add some raindrops over top of the cat and also the umbrella. And like it did before, this really does finish off the scene. It helps bring the cat and the umbrella back into the scene and helps them just look a little bit more incorporated. Now, like I said before, if you don't want to deal with um, the die cutting and the cutting and all that, you could definitely just stamp this scene um, kind of as is. You just wouldn't have that added dimension of the cat and umbrella being popped up a little bit. Okay, so here's my basic card all designed. I trimmed it down just a tiny bit, took about a quarter inch off each side, and then I mounted it onto a card base made out of some Concord and Ninth Midnight cardstock. So here's that second card, and here we are side by side. You can see there's a color difference in the raincoat and also the umbrella. So let me know down in the comments, do you like the more blustery day feeling of the first card or do you prefer the softer edge of the second card? I think both have great merits to them. I could go either way, but this was definitely a learning experience trying to come up with kind of a rain look that works for me. I love the look of the second one. I think it's a little bit more controlled. It goes really well with the cute nature of the, the image of the cat and the umbrella. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will be back very soon. In fact, tomorrow for my weekly live stream here at YouTube. So please come back and join me on Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.